What's happening guys, this is Double RPG here, and I'm here to present another Two Cents video on the Two Cents block to you all. For this video, let us talk about both Chris and Tim Stamper briefly before getting on with the topic for today. If you guys don't know who these two brothers are, they are probably the UK's most creative and quality developer at the time when the country was into gaming thanks to the likes of computer systems such as the Sinclair ZX Spectrum. They eventually took their game development to Nintendo's initial console at the time it started to hit ground with the rest of the world, and they became a prolific third-party developer under the name Rare that made quality and visually impressive titles before they became famous for the likes of Battletoads, Donkey Kong Country, and Banjo-Kazooie. The Stamper Brothers were like prodigies when it came to Nintendo hardware, as they could easily crack into the code of the console and deliver universal results, which made their games look like they were ahead of their time because of the graphics that they managed to incorporate. If you guys don't know that much about their history, I recommend you go to the Nostalgic Gamer's YouTube page, as he currently has a seven-part retrospective of Rareware with an eighth installment that is coming out very soon. It is a great piece of history you don't want to miss out on. Alright, now let us get on with the topic at hand. In relation to the Stamper Brothers being mentioned before everything else, Tim Stamper was recently interviewed and was asked why Nintendo didn't buy the UK's most quality game developer under their belt, to which the guy doesn't even know why. Here are some snippets on what Tim Stamper had to say. I've no idea why they didn't do that. I thought we were a good fit. The price of software development was going up and up with the platforms, and Rare works really well with a partner. We were looking for someone to help broaden our horizons. I like Microsoft. They had a great system, and there's a lot of good people at Microsoft. Other tidbits in relation to what Tim Stamper said came into account, such as Nintendo never materializing the need to purchase them, despite Rare still being keen in securing a partner to help deal with the rising costs of game development. Not to mention that both the brothers left Rare to pursue other opportunities to produce better products in the future. However, we all come to know how Rare was bought out by Microsoft, as several parties were interested in acquiring the famed UK game development studio, with Activision being one of the prime participants. Thus, Microsoft bought Rare for $375 million as the studio became a first-party developer for the company. In the starting years, Rare's innovation in game development continued to grow while the company took many risks that many people were not that very fond of. However, the developer's future seems to be brighter once more, thanks to Phil Spencer putting gamers first instead of being stuck on a peripheral that didn't have a bright future which Don Matrick tried to pin onto Rare. With that out of the way, the developer is back to bringing about games thanks to the efforts of their creativity, and Sea of Thieves looks to be a renaissance of the Stamper Brothers game design philosophy. However, that is not the main point of this video, as my attention is directed toward Nintendo when it comes to Tim Stamper's recent statement. Nintendo, you have got to see Tim Stamper's words as a sign, as game development was growing at the time in which you needed all the help you can get, as there were going to be instances where you would undergo some nasty hiccups during your business structure. If anything, you should have purchased Rare back in the day so that they could at least help you get out of sticky situations when it came to your software. For instance, if you had Rare under your belt right now, most of the members who were once there would have probably remained with the company and even put out some strong quality content for the likes of the GameCube, the Wii, and especially the Wii U. If software sells hardware, then you should have known that a company like Rare would have been a great fit for you as what they did for you helped you still have a great relevance amongst those who have turned their back on you. This whole time with partnerships with other companies that are not doing so hot financially is over, as there are those who still have a strong passion for game development aside from just you. Leaving them in the dust like what you are doing and doing partnerships with them when they could potentially hurt you like what Sega did with the three game deal on Sonic the Hedgehog, you are only leaving them to most likely file for bankruptcy or leaving the opportunity of other publishers like your competitors to pick them up before you do. If you want a statement from last year stating that you are now planning on more mergers and acquisitions is really true, then you need to go out of your way and get that rolling into motion, as there are companies that are either in great peril with where they stand financially, or some that are doing extremely questionable things, such as what Konami has been doing right now. You need to get off of your ass and acquire companies like Capcom, Konami, Sega, Platinum Games, and others as their catalog of IPs is added into your collection to where you can use them to the fullest as the likes of their franchises such as Street Fighter, Resident Evil, Metal Gear, Sonic the Hedgehog, Bayonetta, Shin Megami Tensei, Persona, and many of them will actually benefit you when it comes to making money on a yearly basis. 
acquiring them is not going to be a detriment towards you when it comes to your IPs as the times have changed where people want to see you get into some of the things that they want you to embrace in your own games. Even companies like those who have a vast knowledge with making their games have online play will be a great strength to even some of your IPs you are holding off on that feature. You want to know how much of a benefit that would be for the likes of you? Imagine you learning some of the competitive nature of games when it comes to other genres you haven't pursued to where you can ultimately create newer games in those dormant franchises as well as bringing about newer IPs that can help establish your track record. For instance, imagine if you picked up Sega. You would have Sonic Team under your wing as you could finally make that crossover platform game that both fans of the Italian Plumber and Blue Blur wanted to see for quite a long time instead of the crappy Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games which have plagued on the Wii and the Wii U for quite some time. Imagine if you picked up Platinum Games where some of their IPs such as Bayonetta would continue to benefit you as that franchise would now be a first party IP to change your image on demographics. A couple of these points would show you how much of an evolution you would now go through to change and improve some of your stances on franchises and literally be sending on a gold mine. You would practically have a strong hand in the Japanese video game market which appeals to a global audience that people want you to ambitiously pursue more. The bottom line is that acquiring developers and publishers like these would only add strength to your overall business to become even better than before. It should in no way ever be considered an afterthought nor an option. Nintendo, all I'm trying to say is this. You may not believe me, but there is going to be a point where people are going to stop caring about Mario and Zelda, as you have oversaturated the hell out of those two lately. Yes, they are profitable money makers for your business, and I really do like them for what they are, but others which have become just as popular with their genres becoming even more popular, as well as the strides they have recently taken, would lead you into a better and brighter future for your company. How much longer are you going to continue relying on just Mario and Zelda? How much longer are you going to rely on the Amiibo toy line? How much longer are you going to remain dormant with opening up to including features that people wanted to see for some of your IPs in quite a long time? How much longer are you going to let some of these developers and publishers lie down next to their graves while some of them are financially hurt or doing stupid shit that people have turned their backs on? You need to wake up, embrace the fresh and beautiful colored roses, and take this initiative with doing this even more, as you would gain an upper hand with having stronger support from these businesses and intellectual properties, as that would not be a detriment to your business structure whatsoever. Quit trying to shove out a Mario and Zelda game every year, as sales are going to continue to dwindle if you insist on oversaturating these franchises constantly. Anyway, that is all with my two cents, so I want to hear your own. Do you agree that Nintendo made a mistake with not buying Rare back in the day? Do you think they should get more of these companies under their name, or should they do something better that will benefit both them and the ones that are hurting real bad? Make sure to rate this video as well as leaving your positive and negative feedback down in the comments. Also, be sure to hit that subscribe button underneath that video, as more support from you guys will mean that more content is coming from me in the future that you won't find anywhere else. Until next time, this is Double RPG signing off by saying Godspeed and Game On Gamers. Have a good one.